Flight 229, you're clear for takeoff. Just like a flight plan, you have to know where you're going and how you will get there when you plan for retirement. Let Ryan Fleming help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. It's another edition of the Pilot's Advisor. Walter Storholt alongside Ryan Fleming, financial advisor at Retire Pilots, based out of St. Louis, serving you worldwide. Uh, you can find us online at retirepilots.com and pick up your own retirement toolkit to learn how to properly prepare for your retirement future. Call or text if you have any questions. Check the show notes for contact information to reach out to Ryan. On today's show, we're going to be talking about murky issues that make retirement planning harder and uh, get Ryan's opinion and guidance on some of these issues to see just how big of a problem these things are and how we can better prepare for them. Ryan, good to be with you this week. What's going on in your world? Uh, not a whole lot, except you said murky, and for whatever reason, it, I just got totally sidetracked, and it made me think of murky water and alligators. Mm. Um, you know, I lived in the, the low country for so many years, and uh, if, <laughs> one thing I'm scared of is alligators. Oh, and murky yeah, water. absolutely. Uh, randomly, this is just f so funny. Just last night, we were, um, my, my wife's father was visiting us. He's hiking the Appalachian Trail. Um, he is 79 years old, and he's going to try and through hike the entire Appalachian Trail, all 2,000 plus miles of it. And so he stayed at our house the last night before he left for, uh, for Georgia and the trail. And so we were just trying to watch some mindless TV so he could just kind of relax. And we were watching, we were looking for an animal show and we somehow stumbled upon a show about a guy who had his head bitten by an alligator. And so <laughs> it was, ended up not being the most relaxing like nature animal show, especially before he goes and lives in nature for the next uh, couple of months. But it was, it was very interesting to watch. So yes, murky waters, alligators. And the whole time I was like, I think I'd rather face off against a shark than an alligator. Yeah. Well, in, you know, just uh, thinking about the Appalachian Trail, I, I'm not positive about this, but I think I watched some somewhere where on the Appalachian Trail, there's more, it's either black or brown bears than anywhere else in the world. A lot, lot of black bears. Yeah. Yeah. Black, I guess mm -hmm. black bears. And I watched something on that. And But 79 years old and, and hiking the Appalachian Trail, I, that's awesome and amazing. I want to, you know, at least do the southern portion of the Appalachian Trail. That's one of my goals. But uh, yeah, you did do a great job of setting them up for uh feeling good about sleeping out in the wilderness. This was after he was telling us that he was, uh, you know, getting those, he wasn't saying I'm getting cold feet, like I'm ready to walk away, but he was like, it's real now. So I've gotten, I've gotten nerves, you know, and, um, and then we go and watch a show about that. So <laughs> I think it was bouncing back and forth between the alligator and then the story of a girl that got bitten by a snake, but didn't know that she'd been bitten by a snake. So yeah, it was a uh, it was an interesting hour of television, that's for sure. But, well, before before my wife Carrie and I embark on the Appalachian Trail, I'll be sure not not to don't, stay at your house. Don't, don't stay at our house. We we did yeah. feed we did feed him well though. We did feed him some steak and sweet potatoes, and so he had a good and some cheesecake for dessert. So he had a nice final meal before heading out. But okay, uh, well I'll come for, I'll come for the final just, meal, but I just won't just watch br TV. just bring your own entertainment, and and you'll be good. <laughs> Oh, uh, too funny. All right. Well, sorry. I took you totally off track. I, I, took you totally off track. I love it, though. Uh, and, and the perfect segue with talking about murky issues and uh, bringing to mind the alligators. Uh, so, yeah, let's dive into this. Uh, this was actually a USA Today article, which we can link to in the show notes of today's episode if you want to go check it out. It points to three murky issues that increase retirement planning's degree of difficulty, especially in today's economic climate. And so on this episode, we're going to break down the article to see if it's worthwhile advice, first of all, if the murky issues are actually as threatening as an alligator or crocodile, and uh, what you can do about all of it if you are concerned. So a couple of key points. Author is uh, someone named Christy Bieber from The Motley Fool. Christy, the Biebs. The Biebs. The Biebs. Yeah, yeah different, okay. different Bieber, but uh, maybe relative. I don't know. Uh, Chris, Christy based her three murky issues off of a recent report from the Insured Retirement Institute. It surveyed adults about their readiness for their later years in life and found that millions of Americans are lacking some of the basic knowledge to achieve a successful retirement. All right. So totally agree. Okay. I so absolutely that, agree with that one. That one we can agree on for sure. 
Uh, takeaway number one from the article, first murky element, was that Americans are confused about how much income growth is needed to offset inflation. What do you think about that as a murky takeaway? Well, I absolutely agree with that simply because we call you know inflation and taxes the si- silent killer of your uh, retirement income plan. And, and m- most retirees don't even, t- don't even think about inflation. It's not even something to talk about. Now, I will say what's going on in our world today because we have you know the, the highest inflation in a couple of decades. Now people are starting to go, oh, that inflation thing. But previous to this year, nobody even discussed inflation. It's a great point. And in fact, only uh, in that study, only 26% of workers could correctly identify the level of income growth that they would need to offset inflation over time. So three out of four workers couldn't identify the proper level of income growth that they needed. That's a pretty big concern. Are people at least more aware of the danger now, Ryan, or do you find that there's still a lack of education on the topic in the folks that you're meeting with the past few months? Well, I definitely still think there's a lack of education, but but people are more aware just because it's in the news right now. They're starting to see how, especially if you're on a fixed income right now, you're really feeling it, whether it's buying gas or food, just because it's it's eating up more of, more of your budget every single month. Um, we automatically plan for these things in our retirement plans, you know, not only taxes, but also inflation. Um, so it's something that becomes a discussion topic when you're a pilot's advisor client. So we don't we don't let it fall off the table and we discuss it. But but I think it being in the news right now, um, everybody's kind of going, oh, this inflation thing's a real thing. And and it's funny you bring it up for all our pilot listeners out there. There's many airlines negotiating contracts right now to include FedEx. And it's a big deal when when your when your airline is ne- uh, negotiating a contract. And right now with record inflation, when you start looking at how we're, how much our pay is going to be bumped up, it needs to be bumped up a significant more, amount, you know, greater amount because of the inflation that we have going on. And we don't even have uh, inflation protected retirement pensions. So when you're thinking about what you need to to combat retirement and how it's going to be. This inflation thing is is a major, major issue in the negotiations right now for FedEx. Yeah, it's, that's a big deal for sure. And so we're pretty clear that murky issue number one is a legit one. Uh, what about murky issue number two? Most folks don't know how much Social Security will provide. And in fact, they found that less than half of Americans can correctly identify the average Social Security benefit. And a big chunk of those folks overestimates it. So that's an even worse problem, right? Yeah, that's true. And and I'm going to throw a little term out there and it's called income replacement ratio. So basically how much is your social security going to replace your current income? And sadly, you know, this is a big transition we've had over the last few decades where, you know, we talked about our parents previously where they'd work for the same company for 30 years, they would have a pension and they'd basically be able to live their exact same life. Well, Sadly, now you have to save for your own retirement, which we've already discussed that most people have no clue, not even, a, you know, not even a thought of how much they actually need to save to fund their retirement. And I think they're amongst the uneducated. They just think my Social Security and I'll be good. Well, <laughs> your Social Security benefit is probably not going to cover hardly anything in your retirement. And I would I would agree that most people have no clue what their social security benefit is and probably don't realize how how little it is for the, the actual income they need living day to day. Despite the program being around for so many years, still lots of misconceptions about uh, social security and how it impacts our individual retirement plans. That's for sure. Uh, and, and I would, yeah, go ahead. One more, one, one more point on that, Walter. I, I think social security is still going to be around no matter what. I mean, this is a big thing. Should we plan for social security? Do you think it's I think it's going to be around no matter what, but I think that income replacement ratio is going to continue to decrease. And I also think that the the uh, except you know the retirement age will probably continue to increase. You know, people are living longer, the program's un- underfunded, and so there's very easy ways to make it look a little bit better. And that would be can't take it till a little bit later, and we'll give you less. Be interesting to watch the changes. I'm sure it'll be a little little death by a thousand cuts kind of thing. Little changes, you know, every couple of years for the next couple of decades to kind of just keep it going down the line, perhaps. 
Thanks for listening to the Pilot's Advisor. Hey, if you're ready to have clarity and thrive in your retirement, you're in the right place. And I've got another resource for you to check out. Go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. And look right there on the homepage, you'll be able to click Get My Free Toolkit. What this is going to do is help you get for free Ryan's Retirement Toolkit. This is going to include his two books, The Pilot's Advisor and Pilot's Retire Early, revealing the nine critical decisions when retiring and the seven lessons to save your retirement. If you're ready to retire early or engage the autopilot on your 401k, these are the books for you, and this is the toolkit for you. Not only does it include the books, but lots of other goodies packed into this free toolkit that will be sent to you ASAP. All you have to do is go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. Click on the Send My Toolkit button, and we'll get it in the mail to you shortly. It's a great starting place for any pilot to begin their retirement journey. Go to retirepilots.com. Uh, murky item number three, Ryan. Withdrawal rates are a mystery to many. So that same IRI study found that half of Americans weren't sure how much they could take out of retirement or investment accounts, and most of them couldn't figure out a safe rate to take out of their accounts while not worrying about running out later in retirement. So that's a concept that people haven't come across a whole lot, just sort of like what what rate can you withdraw that money? Well, sadly, I don't think most investors even know what a withdrawal rate is. I don't think they understand what a safe withdrawal rate is or the academics behind that that comes up with that safe withdrawal rate. Um, so I think this is another reason why you need a, a financial advisor to help you not only prepare for retirement, but even more so once you are in retirement to constantly analyze your situation, your withdrawal rates, what the market's doing where to pull income from, which pots of money to pull income from. I tell my clients all the time, saving money is the easy part. The distribution phase of retirement is where the rubber really meets the road and you can't afford to make any mistakes. Well, if you need any help planning for your retirement future, don't hesitate to reach out to Ryan at Retire Pilots. You can go to retirepilots.com. Get your own retirement toolkit while you're there. That'll help you prepare to get to and all the way through retirement with lots of helpful resources. Uh, go to retirepilots.com to order that for free right now. You can also call or text Ryan at any time, 843-475-3038. That's 843-475-3038 to get in touch. Thanks for walking us through this article and uh, you know, giving your thoughts and takeaways on this, Ryan. Certainly very helpful to hear those elements. Again, if you want to get more information, go to retirepilots.com or check the show notes of today's episode for all the ways that you can get in touch and contact Ryan and extra resources. It's getting to know you time. All right, it's time to get to know Ryan Fleming a little bit better on today's show. And so my question for you today, Ryan, what is the coldest you've ever been? Well, that's a great question. Well, I happen to be sitting in Osaka, Japan right now. So this is, uh, this is going to be very relevant. The coldest I've ever been, not a question. I know exactly when it was. And a couple years back, I had my wife, Carrie, fly over and meet me on a uh, trip that I was on. I had a couple days off in between uh, Narita and Osaka, and we decided to hike Mount Fuji. And the big thing about Mount Fuji is everybody wants to hike to the top of Mount Fuji, and you want to watch the sun come up. The sunrise on top of Fuji is supposed to be the most amazing thing that you ever see in your life. Well, the problem was we were still uh, younger than we are now and in decent shape, and we got to the, the summit. We got to the top of Fuji too early. And so we had to wait like an hour and a half for the sun to come up. And we had like one of those, I don't even know what they're called, like a med, not a medical blanket, but like one of those blankets that has like, almost looks like tinfoil on it to yeah. try, to keep the, yeah. try to keep the heat in. And so we're, we're curled up on one of those up against these rocks. And literally, it was so cold up there, I thought I was going to freeze to death. And I was like, almost totally over watching the sun come up. I was like, let's get up and move. Let's start going down the mountain. Let's do anything. Cause so it, it was it, at the point. It would have been helpful to be slower and less in shape is what you're saying. Ev evidently. Yeah. Cause Cause I would was have been moving still. You would have been still on your way up there. Your, your, your temperature would have been up and you wouldn't just be sitting there getting cold the whole time. Yeah. It was, you know, we got to the top and everything was great. We, you know, they, and they actually have a place up there where you can, you can actually buy a drink and stuff like that. So we, you know, you could have a beer to say, Oh yeah, we got to the top, whatever. 
So we did that. And then the waiting game started and, you know, you, cur you curl up next to your spouse to try to keep warm. And then the next thing you know, it's like, you're literally like holding each other to like stay alive. And that was probably my worst memory of the hike on Fuji was, was just, uh, waiting for the sun to come up because it started getting so cold. Do you have any idea of what the actual temperature was up there? I, I don't know. I mean, at that altitude, you know, in the middle of the night, I don't know what it actually uh, was, but I know that I didn't have enough clothes. I didn't have enough blankets and it was, you got, you got so cold. It was almost hard to get up to even start to move to even warm up again, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's uh, I, I've been there before. Um, I, I've been in some negative, uh, let's see, negative 12 and negative 15 before. Uh, once in Indiana at, at Notre Dame University, and once in Maine, where my grandparents live at Christmas. Uh, some very, very cold times. But I wouldn't say those that's the coldest I've ever been. I, that, those are the coldest temperatures I've ever been in, but not how I've felt the coldest. That came in New York City in Yankee Stadium during, uh, you know how in the NHL they play the outdoor hockey games? Uh, every once in oh, a while, yeah. they'll do like were, did, one, one or two yeah, a year. Yeah, very cool. So I, I, I did the. I'm a, I'm a New Jersey Devils fan, so I did the Devils Rangers game one year with my dad. We flew up uh, to New York and then back same day. It was so cool. We got really cheap flights in the and got the first flight out in the morning and then like the last flight out at night. And so we did a same day trip to uh, to the Devils and uh, Rangers game. But we got there so early, and then we spent all day walking around New York City, and it was so cold so windy and we were walking outside a ton so by the time the game started we were already frozen and then they delayed the game like two hours because of sun glare it was like really they weren't going to be able to figure this out before the before the game that the, the angles were going to create a sun glare um so they delayed the game a little bit so by the time we get up to our seats there's been a run on the hot chocolate there's no hot chocolate left whatsoever there's like no warm drinks to be had anywhere in the stadium and it's a baseball stadium, so it's you know completely exposed. And I think it was 19 degrees, which you know you'd think that being in the negative 12, negative 15 would have been much worse than that. But the wind was blowing, and then you know you're sitting in those seats, and your knees and your in the top, top part of your legs are just really kind of exposed. We were okay on the upper body, but our legs were just frozen. Like a good pair of jeans, even though I think we were, we might have put on some like long johns or something underneath it. It still wasn't enough. It was like that wind just cut right through the jeans, right through everything we were wearing, and we were just so cold to the bone. It was, it was so bad, and the devils got crushed. So that didn't make it feel any better. <laughs> no, no thanks. I mean, just hearing that, I oh. I grew up in the Midwest, but after living in this in the South for so long, I have turned into the biggest wimp. And I realized that you have a choice, and I don't like being cold. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We we got on the bus to go back to the uh, to the airport, and the bus was so warm. We both immediately almost fell asleep just because it was, you know, you ever get really, really cold, and you get into a hot environment, and you just kind of get flush, and you just immediately want to fall asleep. So we both mm -hmm. fell asleep on the bus, and we almost missed the airport because we were sitting there sleeping on the bus, heading back to, to fly home. But woke up just in time, thankfully, but quite the trip and uh oh my gosh i'm getting cold just thinking about it so uh i'm i'm sure you were freezing at the top of the mountain waiting for those hours too amazing cold equals bad that's right that's right stay in the south now uh fantastic ryan thank you for the help safe travels as you leave japan and uh we'll talk to you again soon take care walter thanks as always all right, i'll talk to everybody next time right back here on the pilot's advisor information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.